Good morning, Rich Ness, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media, here for my weekly chat with Ray Zinn. How are you doing, Ray? You feeling any better than last week? Yeah, I am. Uh, getting, getting a little better. Thank you. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Certainly can't have you under the weather. So uh, we, we started to talk last week about the military spending and about bringing jobs to the U.S. and how the politicians are always trying to bring back jobs for their constituents. Um, I want to stay away from the politics side of it, but is it's actually possible to bring jobs back into the U.S. to build up these factories like Obama had always talked about, or is that just a pipe dream? Um, is, 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 is that something that's real? Well, you, we've seen him try to retain jobs. Uh, I know that uh, uh, you know, Carrier has, has agreed to not move uh, a major portion of their uh, manufacturing to, to Mexico. I, it looks like he's also uh, affected Ford and GM with regard to their move. So uh, uh, I, I think more just stopping the, the flow uh, is, is more than just trying to, you know, bring jobs back. Uh, uh, I, I, I heard uh, that uh, one of the factories is actually uh, uh, going to increase production in the U.S., but through automation. That's not going to help add jobs, but certainly the, the production aspect of it through automation um, will allow them to, to produce uh, more product here. So I think uh, automation is going to play a big part in, uh, in, in what we build in the U.S., but not necessarily going to increase jobs. But isn't it fair to say that those are au- automized, that's not the word, uh, automated factories need the white-collar workers to, 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 to build them, design them? Isn't that just as good? Oh, sure. But we're talking about numbers of jobs and, and uh and so, you know, I don't think you're going to get the numbers of jobs uh, vis-a-vis uh, auto- automation. Uh, even, albeit in there, there, there will be uh, white-collar type, type jobs. Uh, the infrastructure build, uh, you know, that's, that's more blue-collar. And that, that, so there is some hope there. So I think maybe there's going to be an offset with the infrastructure build and the, uh, and the automation effort uh, for white-collar. So uh, if we can just stem the tide of, of, of the people... Uh, uh, or country companies leaving the U.S. That, that that will definitely help. Is it the taxes that do that? You know, the you know making it difficult to uh, build stuff offshore. Well, we haven't seen much of that yet. Uh, that yet to be uh, played out. So I think more of him negotiating with these companies. You know, we had the uh, all those CEOs that went back to Washington D.C. and that roundtable he had with them, uh, just encouraging them not to. Uh, to uh, to move and of course there is that threat and and, and it's real that he would uh, put a, a value added tax on on products that are that are uh, built outside and then brought back into the U.S. and of course with the hopefully reduction in uh, corporate uh, taxes uh, might uh, also discourage other companies from trying to move offshore. It's expensive, by the way. If if uh, the companies that like Cisco do intend to move product or manufacturing into the U.S., that, that's, that's going to be somewhat costly for them uh, and, uh, because they're already set up offshore and, uh, and, and those tax bases are, are sheltered offshore. So all they can really hope for is just, you know, kind of getting some kind of a tax holiday on the, on the money that got trapped offshore. It's a complicated thing. It's not going to, I don't think, happen in, in just a few months. It's, it's going to take, uh, you know, a year or two for, for anything like that to to really have an impact. I remember the famous sit-down that Obama had with Steve Jobs, and, he's, and I know I'm screwing this up, but he asked him what it would take to bring the uh, manufacturing of the iPhones to the U.S., and Jobs just told him it ain't going to happen. Yeah, well, it's not easy. I mean, we, uh, we can talk about it, but it's, it's until, you know, uh, people like Flextronics, and, and who, I think, uh, who build the phones for uh, for, for Apple and, and China, uh, it's, it'll, it'll take some effort to, to bring that kind of manufacturing back to the U.S. And then the training of the, of the uh, workforce to, to, to do that. You know, we've had uh, uh, roughly uh, 16 years now of uh, manufacturing offshore. I think it began right after uh, the um, uh, 2000, you know, when the dot-com implosion took place. That's when you had the big move from uh, U.S. manufacturing uh, to to Asia, so uh, uh, 
you know, the, the 16 years is a long time for them to build up that infrastructure offshore, and then to, to move it back is not going to be an easy task. I agree completely. So we'll just have to see what happens. Okay. Very interesting discussion. I'm sure this is a topic that will be debated for years to come, you know, at least through the to this administration. I agree, and it's going to take a while for anything to happen tax-wise. So uh, uh, I'm not expecting taxes to, the, the tax rate to change uh, uh, before at least the second half of this year. Very good. Okay. Well, that was Ray Zinn, and as you know, he's an author. He's actually working on a new book that I'm, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to pronounce that. But uh, he is working on, on a new book, and he's a podcaster, and he, and he joins us every week. So have a great week, Ray, and I will speak to you next week. Well, thanks, Rich. I appreciate being on your program. My pleasure.